Well, here's the barn. I told you all I was planning on building. I use these uh, sturdy built curtains. So far, I like them. Haven't had a uh, bad winter yet since it's new barn, but it's got a track and a drive in it. It's a center roll up. I like it. I still haven't cleaned up my mess yet. Kind of busy. And I used a guardrail on the sides. As you all know that the lumber price went up substantially. I ordered mine. Uh, I priced the lumber package in about two weeks and went up $600. So I bought it all so I could uh, go ahead and get it all built. And they brought it in different stages of building it. So that was nice of them. Um, you can draw telephone poles, power line poles. Uh, I got those free and they weigh a ton. I cut them all at eight and a half foot and put them in concrete. Uh, use my guardrail, obviously. If you didn't know, this was uh, the, our sow barn before. Tore it down, most of it myself. Uh, here's a look at the old concrete, and new concrete. I poured a nine inch by eight inch lip all the way around everything. And I put a uh, four foot wall in there. It's supposed to be a moisture barrier. I still gotta put my neck rail on yet. Uh, most of all these calves range from 1250 pounds to 1000 pounds there's a couple of small ones in here uh, you'll probably see them uh, so far it's been working great uh, I got some bean fodder that I'm using uh, I put sawdust down first and then I put corn stalks in here there's probably 30 rolls of fodder in here. Yeah, I don't plan on cleaning it out until it gets to the top of the second guardrail there. Um, decided to do the guardrail. I was gonna pour a four foot concrete wall, put the post on it, and that was pretty pricey. So I ordered my post, and by the time I got around, I was gonna put treated lumber on here. These are on 10 foot centers. Um, I was gonna put treated lumber on here and by the time I got the barn done and got my treated lumber, I priced it. It was about the same as using all the guardrail. So I used guardrail. I haven't quite finished that either. I still gotta get a few bolts in there to hold it up. But uh, it's a uh, 35 foot truss, two foot overhang, so it's 39 foot truss. I should have had a three or four foot overhang to deal with the rain when it blows in here kind of sideways. I think it's supposed to help on pack barn. That's what this this is, is a pack barn. Um, got these uh, guardrail out of Dunville, Kentucky, a couple hours away. And then I put angle iron here in the corner and bolted everything together and torched it all. Um, and I bought these bull gates. They are uh, pretty heavy. They're a lot better than those little little red gates you get. They're a lot heavier. Takes a lot to bend them. And oh yeah, there's the bull pen. That's where they're gonna stay for the winter. And I dug that water line when I was digging the water line for this barn. It runs down through here. Uh, let's see what else I bought that uh, Snedley stuffer last year I really like it I can put uh, if it's completely empty I can put two of my mixer loads in it it holds 8,000 pounds uh, they might have to kick it around a little bit but I get the lid shut um, I did work these back here I uh, weighed them and did everything Bought a prefer squeeze chute. Can we use it on the Angus and up here? Um, there's one of the small ones. I didn't raise any of these calves. Easy. I got this little walk through here. They can't get out. It works great when you're unloading into this. 
And it sits a little bit, the ground sits a little bit high right here. So the mixer can clear all this stuff with the auger because the auger sits lower. So I can bring my auger around this way and I can feel the whole, the whole distance. So I'm trying to do as much thinking and planning as I could. I'm hoping all that stuff lasts a lifetime. And I got some black fiber tar and put on top of these posts. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but we'll give it a try. <clears throat> and uh, bought a round baler and uh, round out a bunch of corn stalks and wrapped them all. Uh, there's some up on the hill, the barn's full of them too. I've been using uh, about two, two rolls every three days or so. So about right around four bales a week. But this is not done back here. I had to move this power pole. I don't think you're supposed to run it over barns either, but it was already like that. It was over here. I moved it over there and kind of built this little box. I plan on building like a little shed here over top of this stuff and I'll run power to it. Uh, maybe move the power pole on the other side of the building. And what I did is I took these green gates or these pins and stacked them around here all the way over. And the prefer squeeze chute, we used pallet force and brought it back here and hooked it on here. Uh, this has actually been cut down and welded to fit the scale, the true test scale. And uh, of course I guard railed all that, put treated post in, concreted all of it. I just, uh, with these posts, I just mixed the bags and put it in there. A little bit of work, but it works. So this is my holding bin. Most all the manure, if you get a pretty good rain, you know, it's all sloped. I sloped the concrete this way and it slopes this way. So most all of it slopes right on down through here. And uh, right into the lagoon. I got a mess to clean up. We've been using it for a little while, but this was an overflow lagoon for the hogs. It would go into that lagoon and overflow into this one when we had all our hogs. Uh, we pump it out, used to pump it out twice a year. Anyway, I had to get in here. I took my skid steer and I dug all this out and uh, got a little mini excavator in here and dug the footer for this wall and I poured a four foot wall all the way around and uh, back filled it in and uh, put steel and everything on a bit of this. And I got that free. I got a little culvert put in there. But um, it's not quite how I want it to work, but it, it worked right now. No, nothing here is really permanent. Now, I plan on running guardrails to the distance of the barn or distance of the push off. And you can uh, you can do your square footage. I forgot how many square foot it was. But you can do like uh, two by six. You can do about 12 foot uh, square foot per steer probably. Maybe a little more. And I'll put a gate in down here. I kind of want this to be like a bud box where I run them down this way and they come, they want to come back and they go back in here. Eventually the plan is to get a sweep tub or make one to go into this. Whenever you got, that's why I had to pour this concrete because whenever you get a scale, you got to have it pretty level. Found it out the hard way because up there where we were weighing them, it wasn't level and they tore pieces off the scale or sliding. It's hard to get them weighed. It worked excellent this time. So anyway, weigh them, bring them here and work them, give them their worming, implant, whatever, vaccinate. And this is kind of a holding pen and that gate opens up that way and you can run back in the barn. But yeah, uh, no more sow barn. Tore it all down piece by piece. Had gavel loom on it. They were 31 foot pieces. And I burnt all the boards. Um, had some termite damage. Actually, I fell through the roof and I almost broke my ankle because of all the <coughs> termite damage in it. But anyway, uh, this was our bullpen. It stopped right around where this grass is and goes went to that tree. And all this was all just basically mud. But uh, I got a decent stand of grass. I need to get some more in here. But uh, that's it. 
I wish I would have made it about 20 foot wider, but I have it set up to where I can put a 20 foot lean to on here and move the guardrail over and move the curtain if I have to. But uh, I think it'll hold, well right now it's got close to 70 in it. So um, we'll see how it goes. I'm mostly worried about ammonia. These trees block everything. This is the west and that's the north. So we get typically a south wind here and it's been working out pretty good. But <clears throat> I built this so I can open up the to be able to raise the Angus up there uh, on slop and different things and silage. Uh, I still got to fatten them on corn. It's basically the slop is equivalent of this adding bean meal to it. Your corn ration, corn silage. But anyway, <coughs> we ship some. We sent a load of fats Angus out. So I've got. I'm able to send them out now. And uh, this year we're gonna do all of our calves instead of half of them. It's, uh, it can definitely be a financial strain trying to finish your calves. Uh, these, uh, I bought all these back in March, April. I got a guy raising some bottle calves. Some of them came in stock yards. They've been all over the place. That's why they're mixed up in sizes, but um they're eating quite a bit they're eating about 24 pounds per head somewhere around in there uh there's probably some big ones eating more than that and some small ones eating less than that but that's about what i got figured 20 to 24 pounds somewhere around in there but um <clears throat> they're all back here this is uh don't have any bottle calves haven't raised any in a while kind of miss raising them but i will eventually one day but we're uh on the short rows now of harvest we got most of we got one more field of wheat to plant most of our wheat is sprouted yeah these are the double crop beans there we ran them this week i uh, got most of all actually all of our beans except for about five acres are done and we got about 50 acres of corn left to go and we'll be done problem is most of all the bins are full so we'll have to be waiting on a truck to get everything out but anyway been pretty pretty busy and uh I got a lot of these ideas from uh, university sites, so uh, anything's possible. But uh, the, the goal is I'm not going to be satisfied until this barn is profitable. And that means the cattle have to gain. And I want them to gain over three pounds regardless per day. And uh, <clears throat> most of the time they do that. Sometimes they don't. Depends on your weather. But uh, I've been selling, uh, like I said, selling the Angus. So, anyway, I've gone on long enough. Thanks for watching.